Okay, this particular video is going to help you with, uh, if you look at the quiz planner, it's the first and the last skill on the Unit 8 quiz planner, which is about how to uh, write and balance half reactions for oxidation and reduction, and also how to balance simple redox reactions. So I'm going to start with the half reaction. I'm going to use uh, four reactions to demonstrate with. And the first thing I'd say, let's just go back and double check. Should zinc spontaneously react with copper ion? Well, again, if you look at table J over here, you'll notice that zinc sits up here above copper. And so zinc in the metal state should be able to spontaneously react with copper ion. And so now the, the next thing we need to do is to kind of look at the reaction and figure out how to write something called the half reaction. Or in other words, there's an oxidation half to this reaction and a reduction half to it. And we're going to balance those half reactions by putting electrons right into the half reactions. And that will then eventually help us balance the whole reaction. And so the first thing you want to do is just kind of grab the single elements out. And again, uh, we often don't show all the other materials that are involved in the reaction, just the uh, ions that are participating in the redox. And you'll notice that zinc changes to zinc plus two. So I have that written up here as an oxidation. I know it's an oxidation because the zinc's oxidation number value went from zero up to two, and that must happen by losing electrons. Remember Leo Gurr or oil rig for that. And then uh, notice, uh, again, copper went from plus two to zero, so that's the reduction half of this reaction. And again, I remember reduction, usually a little easier for me to remember because reduction is reduction in charge value, and it went from two plus down to zero. And so now the way to balance the half reactions is real easy. You just look at the charge change. This one went from zero to plus two. And keep in mind that a balanced reaction, or a half reaction for that matter, has to be balanced not only for mass, but also for charge. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to drop two electrons right in here because two minus charges and two plus charges do add up to the charge on the other side, which is zero. So this is saying the charge started out at zero and the charge is still zero at the end. In other words, the two plus uh, is balanced off by a two minus. On the other half reaction, I'm going to just put the two electrons on the other side. And that probably is some common sense. If somebody's losing electrons, uh, the other species must be gaining them. So you see this is written as electrons being gained by the copper ion to turn into copper metal. All right, now in this one, it's pretty easy. I noticed that two electrons are gained by each copper ion and two electrons were lost by each zinc atom. And so two and two sort of balance out. I don't have to do anything other than realize, well, this reaction apparently is balanced as it's written. I don't have to put any other coefficients in place to make it work. All right, let's look at one that's a little more involved. Uh, the next one has sodium metal reacting with aluminum ions. So sodium is being oxidized, going up to plus one. So I'm going to balance that by putting one electron in. One minus and one plus adds to zero. And aluminum was gaining electrons three at a time to go from three plus to zero. Again, three minuses and three pluses from the aluminum ion add up to zero. And now I'm going to recognize that I need this reaction or this half reaction to happen three times so that I have three electrons being lost for each aluminum ion that reacts picking up three. And so that then balances the equation for me. I realize I only need this one to happen once for every three times the sodium half reaction goes on. So I'm going to come in here and put a three in front of the sodium species and a one in front of the aluminum and we're done. Okay, the next one, magnesium reacting with iron ion. Uh, magnesium is oxidized, so plus two electrons there to balance the charge, plus three electrons over here to balance the charge, and uh, I have two electrons being lost each time magnesium reacts, three electrons being gained each time iron reacts. I think you may recall from balancing equations that three and two changes have to be switched like this to get it to balance. So I need this reaction to happen three times, this one to happen twice. And so again, I'm going to just drop those coefficients in. Three in front of the magnesium each time I see that, two in front of all the iron species. And that's uh, balanced. Now again, be careful when looking at these reactions like this. They might appear to be balanced right off the bat, but if you're being smart about the fact that uh, 
balanced equations have to be balanced for mass and charge, you'll notice, well, 0 and 4 does not equal 0 and 3. And so don't fall into that trap of saying, oh, it's already balanced. You have to go back and kind of play around with the half reactions like we're doing. Here I'm going to write three electrons there. Here I'm going to write four. And now again, we're going to have to play a little switcheroo game. I need aluminum to half reaction to happen four times. I need the tin half reaction to happen three times. I just come on over here and pop those numbers in place. And the thing is balanced. Just that easy. You're going to want to practice with worksheet four right now off the CD.